All right, so in our last video, we talked about building some skills to help us lead into verifying identities. So you've practiced simplifying some expressions, and you've done some work reviewing your algebra skills, and today we're going to kind of put those things together and see if we can prove that these statements are true. So when we talk about verifying identities, it is a proof of sorts, but it's not like proofs that you may have seen in geometry class. It's more saying, hey, this says this is equal to this. Can you actually show that that would be true using algebraic skills and our trig substitutions with our simplifying expressions? So just like the last one, we're going to only pick one side to work on. Usually you want to pick the side that is more complicated and try to simplify it to match the other side. That's not an all the time thing, but it's a usual thing. Um, and then you want to try to make some substitutions that will make some things cancel out that will get you to the side that you're trying to be at. So for number one, we're trying to make cotangent over cosecant. We're trying to show that that's equal to cosine. So I am not going to touch cosine at all. We're just going to leave that completely alone the entire time. And I'm basically going to just start on this left side and I'm going to do some substitutions and some simplifying like I did in topic one. So to start, I'm going to split this into two separate fractions and see if this will help me out. So I get cotangent over one and one over cosecant of x. Notice I'm still not touching that part in red. So then if I keep going, a substitution I could make for cotangent or cosecant, knowing I'm trying to get to cosine. Well, I don't see cosine over here anywhere yet, but I could change this cotangent into cosine of x over sine of x using a quotient identity. And I could turn this 1 over cosecant into sine of x. Now sine of x cancels with sine of x, and I am left with cosine of x equals cosine of x. And I have just proved that this left side, making all legal substitutions, okay, I've used the analogy, a sports analogy in my class, where if you're going to take someone off the field, you have to make a legal substitution for someone else to come back in. You're trying to make a good comparison of team members and make sure that people are playing nicely on the field. So make sure that you're doing things legally. Um, and we just proved that cosine is equal to cosine, which means that cotangent over cosecant, right, is equal to cosine. All right, the next one then, um, I'm going to say that the more complicated side is my left again. So I'm going to leave cosine completely alone and hope that I can do enough work on the left side to make things simplify into cosine. So looking at this 1 minus sine squared, hopefully in your head you're saying, ooh, that looks like it could be a Pythagorean identity because we've got a 1 and we've got that trig function squared. Well, I know that from my reference sheets that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. And what I have here is 1 minus sine squared theta. So if I subtract this sine squared to the other side, now I can replace this whole thing, 1 minus sine squared, with cosine. That's an even exchange. That's an even substitution. So my numerator is going to be cosine squared of beta. we got to keep our angles the same over cosine of beta. And I'm trying to show that that is still equal to cosine of beta. Notice I haven't touched the right side at all. I'm just carrying that down with me. So on the left side, because I have cosine squared over cosine, I can cancel out a square with one in the denominator. And I get that the cosine of beta is in fact equal to the cosine of beta. Again, this just gets carried down. This is what I'm trying to prove is true. And I did all my work on one side of the equation, making legal substitutions with my identities to get me there. All right, so these next ones, it's kind of hard to tell which one is the easier side to work with, like which one's more complicated, which one's less complicated. Um, so the way that I like to think about these is I have one term here. I don't have addition or subtraction. And here I have two terms. So I'm either going to need to split this up into two terms, or I'm going to need to somehow make these two terms come together. It doesn't matter which one you decide to do or which one you like better. You'll find that certain methods work better for you. This one, I've got two fractions, right, two terms, and I could either try to bring those together to become this side, or I could take this side and I could try to somehow split it up into this, but 
that looks harder to me. So on this one, I'm gonna start with this side here and I've gotta figure out a way that I can introduce addition or subtraction so that I can somehow make everything equal to this side. Well, thinking about sine squared, I know that sine squared beta plus cosine squared beta is equal to one. So that means that if I wanna replace sine squared, there it is, I would need to move this cosine squared to the other side. So this part sine squared is exactly the same as one minus cosine squared of beta, and I still have my cosine of beta underneath. This is just gonna carry down with me, and I'm hoping to show that these things are equal. Now I can split up fractions, just like we did when we practiced our algebra skills. I have one over cosine, minus cosine squared over cosine. Still trying to show that that is equal to my right side that's carrying down with me. One over cosine from the reciprocals is the same thing as secant. And then a cosine squared over a cosine will cancel itself out to just be cosine. And that is now equal to secant of beta minus cosine of beta, just like I wanted. Okay, so again, using those algebra skills, we introduced a subtraction sign using Pythagorean theorem, and then we split across our fractions because they had a common denominator, so we were able to split them back up. All right, so this next one, I'm gonna try the other strategy. Instead of splitting this, like I split this one into subtraction, instead of trying to split this into addition, I'm gonna to try to find a common denominator and put these two together to get to one single term. So I'm gonna divide this up. I am not touching the right side. I'm just hoping to show by the time I'm done with everything that the left side is in fact equal to this right side of two secant squared. So common denominator, I'm gonna to need to multiply this whole term by one plus sine theta over one plus sine theta, right, to find a common denominator here. So one times one is one, one times sine is sine. On the bottom, I'm gonna to need to distribute. So one times one is one. Uh, sine times one is sine, but then I get minus sine, so those are gonna cancel out. And then I get sine times sine, which is minus sine squared. Okay, so difference of squares there, one minus sine squared. On this second term here, I'm gonna need to multiply the top by one minus sine theta and the bottom also by one minus sine theta because our common denominator should be one plus sine theta times one minus sine theta, so that's what I'm building in here using algebra. Across the top, I've got one minus sine theta and across the bottom, I'm gonna get that same difference of squares, one minus sine squared theta. Well, now that these have a common denominator, just like adding fractions, I can combine their numerators. So one plus one is two, and sine minus sine cancels. So I get two really plus zero, but I'm just gonna leave that as two. Getting closer, I have one term, uh, I have a two, which I needed in there somewhere. So now let's talk about this one minus sine. One minus sine from a previous example, that was just equal to cosine squared. One minus sine squared was equal to cosine squared. This two is just up above. I could view this as two times one over cosine squared using those Splitting of fractions, right? So moving this to the two over, two times one is two, this would be over one. So then my final answer is two, using the reciprocal identities, secant squared will equal two secant squared, which is what I wanted, okay? So again, this side, I split this into two pieces. This side, I combined my two pieces to then get to one term. Moving right along. Cosine squared times tangent squared plus one is equal to one. Okay, well, hopefully when you look at this, you can tell that the left side is more complicated. So I'm gonna try to condense everything to hopefully just be equal to one at the end. That is my goal. 
Using my Pythagorean identities, tangent squared plus one looks like something familiar to me. And I notice that that can be subbed in for secant squared theta. And I still have this cosine squared theta. Well, now using reciprocal identities, cosine squared theta can be multiplied with one over cosine squared theta. My cosine squareds are gonna cancel out and I'm left with one. Now, another way you could have done that one, you could have distributed cosine squared to both of these and then use some Pythagorean identities, but I think if you use the Pythagorean identities right away, you're good to go. Something you should note about these, you can't really mess them up as long as you're plugging in things that are legal substitutions, so true mathematical facts and making substitutions. As soon as you start to plug in things that aren't true, then we might have some problems, but using your identity sheet, you should be okay. You might remember that when all else fails, sometimes it's helpful to change things to sines and cosines. So for instance, right now, I'm trying to get all these cosecant, cotangent, tangent, sine, all to cotangent and cosecant. That seems like a lot of different functions altogether. And so our common thread could be to put them all in terms of sine and cosine. So I'm gonna start on the left side, and I'm just gonna start making those substitutions. So cosecant in terms of sine is one over sine of, I think this is, a, I'm not sure what Greek letter this is supposed to be, looks like a little alpha, but not really sure, uh, plus cosine of this weird Greek letter over sine of this weird Greek letter. Um, over tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine, and this is just good old sine. We could think about it as being over one. Okay, and I'm hoping to show that this is all equal to this one. All right, well, up here, these things have a common denominator, so I could put those together. One plus cosine over sine. And on the bottom, I could, let's think about this, I could find a common denominator. So this one has cosine, this one has one. So this I'd multiply by one over one, that doesn't do anything. This one I'd multiply by cosine over cosine. So across the top here, I've got sine plus sine cosine over my new denominator, which is now cosine. Okay. Well, this is good because I'm getting in terms of sines and cosines, getting things condensed down. Uh, whenever you have a fraction divided by another fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I've got one plus cosine over sine times, I'm going to flip or find the reciprocal of this other one. So we've got sine plus sine, cosine, all here. All right, well, trying to think what I could get to cancel. So if we think about these in terms of each one individually, maybe you can see that we have a one plus cosine, and this right here, if I factor out a sine, I'm left with one plus cosine. So let's think about that first. Because now, this is a tricky one, guys, but one plus cosine and one plus cosine are going to cancel out. So what I'm left with is a one in this numerator over that sine. In this fraction, I'm left with a cosine over sine. Well, one over sine is cosecant, and cosine over sine is cotangent. I was hoping to show that this would be equal to cotangent cosecant. And hopefully you agree, if this was three times four, that's the same as four times three. So we actually have gotten to our final answer, which should always be written perfectly as the left side equals perfectly the right side. So that one was pretty tricky. We had to change the sines and cosines, find some common denominators, use our algebra skills, use a greatest common factor, these are all things that are coming together, and really the way you get better at them is by practice. So for seven and eight, they are challenge problems. We'll give you the next video so you can watch those. If you feel confident in where you are right now, you could move on to homework and you don't have to watch that second video. But if you wanna see those two challenge problems coming up, you might wanna do that for extra practice.